we have subjugated religious convictions to the category of opinions rather than truth. That's an underlying assumption in the conversation. Let's jump into this idea uh, that a lot of people have an issue with when it comes to the exclusivity of Christianity. Quite often I hear people say things like, hey, isn't it arrogant, isn't it presumptuous to think that you are the only one that's right about God? And Christianity claims that it is right and correct. Christianity claims to be the truth. Christianity claims that the only way you can actually gain salvation is through Jesus. And that becomes a problem for quite a bit of people. And I think this is only a problem in a pluralistic society. That's really what it comes down to. People just naturally assume pluralism and then they go, we have problems with exclusive claims. I personally don't think this is an issue because when you think about it from a more epistemological, more philosophical perspective about what the nature of truth is itself, then it, it goes out the window because it's not an issue with Christianity. It is an issue with knowledge. It's not an issue really, but if you want to think about it that way, because anytime you make a truth claim, what you are saying is anything that contradicts that, anything that is beyond that is false. And so therefore shouldn't be accepted or believed. So it's not a religion issue. It's a truth issue. Now, if somebody wants to give up the concept of truth altogether, they're going to have a whole mountain of issues to deal with. But when it comes to Christianity, say Christianity says the only way to salvation is through Christ. I'm not going to quote a bunch of Bible verses about this. I might reference them, but I'm not going to quote them. Partly because I don't think it is a Bible issue. Because let's consider the major monotheistic religions of the world. You got Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. And if you want to put it maybe in a chronological order, Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Every single one of those make a claim about the nature of God. So it's a truth claim. Every single one of those make a claim about sacred books, sacred texts, revelations from God that excludes the others. So Judaism makes a claim that their main prophet says Moses, and there's a revelation, at least a Torah, plus some, if you're looking at the Tanakh. And there's things about God that they believe that becomes contradictory. Within Judaism, there gets this setup in which it rejects Christianity. So Christianity says Jesus is God, and Judaism says God can't be a man. And so therefore there is a rejection of Christianity. So you can't be a Jew and accept Christianity as a valid religion. So Christianity goes out the window. You can't be Jewish and accept the claims of Islam, because the claims of Islam contradict the claims of Judaism. So Islam goes out the window. You can't accept the claims of any religion outside of monotheism because Judaism is monotheistic. It's got a claim about the nature of God. So Judaism is acts exclusive. So let's look at Islam. I Islam makes certain claims that contradict both Christianity and Judaism. For example, one of the claims of Islam is that Muhammad is God's prophet. And if you reject that, you can't be a Muslim. And both Christianity and Judaism reject that claim. And so therefore, they're exclusive in that. Islam rejects all the polytheistic, panantheistic, any kind of theistic religion and worldview you want to suggest because it's monotheistic. And so therefore, those religions go out the window. That includes offshoots, by the way, say Baha'ism and things like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, any one of these categories would reject those things. And so Christianity says is a central tenet of Christianity that Jesus Christ is God incarnate, second person of the Trinity. Christianity is monotheism, but it's a Trinitarian monotheism. And reject these things because of the rejection of Jesus being God incarnate. And so Christianity has a truth claim about God and his nature and how to be saved that excludes these two as well as all the polytheistic, panantheistic religions because they are fundamentally against the concept of God within that religion. Now, you might want to say it seems like monotheism is the problem. If you believed in a more accepting religious 
worldview, then that way everything can be brought together. But this seems problematic when it comes to the nature of truth. So say if we take Hinduism, for example, Hinduism can say yes to many different gods, but that's within a system. And so if we take Christianity and plug it into that system, then it contradicts the system itself. Because if you accept Christianity, then re you're rejecting your own system. And so therefore, Hinduism is exclusive because it would, by nature, have to reject the monotheistic religions because they make claims that there is only one God. See, this is not a subject of religious intolerance. This is not a subject of being closed-minded. It's none of those things. It's just the way reality works. It very basically gets boiled down to something like the law of non-contradiction. Now, if I hold this up and I say this is a cup, then it is a cup. And by nature of me designating, say, cuphood to the cup, whatever makes a cup is what I mean by cup, cup or its cupness, then anything other than that, anything other than uh, the definition of what a cup is, would by definition be not a cup. This is not that complicated. So when these subjects get brought up, when people get riled up and emotionally entangled, how can you be so close-minded? It's not about being closed-minded. You either have, you have two choices. You're either going to make truth claims and by making a truth claim, exclude everybody else that is outside of the truth claim that you're making, or you don't make any truth claims at all. Hey, it's good to see you here on Apologia Center. This is a ministry that's there to provide you, the viewer, with content that's going to be informative for you, that you can learn from and apply into your life as you develop your worldview formation as a Christian. If you're not a Christian, you're more than welcome to be on this channel and maybe be challenged by some of the claims of Christianity and challenge us with your claims in a friendly, respectful way. I think this is a channel like no other on YouTube, frankly, because of the community we've developed. So if you want to be a part of this community, go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you aren't subscribed, join us on Discord and jump onto our Patreon and just be a part of the community. But that seems counterintuitive because you would have to give into and believe a proposition like no truth claims should be made, which in itself is a truth claim that contradicts the very claim itself. So it's self-contradictory. You guys see the problem here. So there is an emotional aspect of this conversation that I think a lot of people focus too much attention on. And there's more of a logical aspect of it. And the logical aspect is what I started with and what I want to continue with. I'll touch on the emotional stuff because the logical aspect of it very clearly shows every single one of these religions can be wrong. There's no issue with someone saying, I reject all religions as being true, but it cannot be the case for someone to sit there and say, all religions are true. You might be able to couple some of them together in general categories. So like I did with Islam and Judaism and Christianity and say, these are monotheistic religions. So that's a very general truth. But when we get into the details, they start contradicting one another. And you might be able to do that on the more pluralistic religion. But then when you bring in the monotheistic ones that are very strong statements about the, God, the nature of God, it falls apart. And so I would prefer that you and I and every single one of us start with the logical stuff. Put it down on paper, give definitions, break it down and see. And say, see, if we want to have any kind of a truth seeking experience, this is the way it has to look. Either one of these is true or none of them are true, but they can't all be true. And then the way you handle the emotional stuff is I validate people, right? So I would, I validate people's intention of wanting to bring unity and bring a kind of human shared experience together and say, Hey, we feel for you. Like, even when I say you're wrong, that is not a condemnation of your humanity or a condemnation of your person, personhood or something like that. But on top of that, I want to ask the question of why is it that we should value your humanity? Does your religion, does your system of thought, does your worldview give us room to validate your humanity? And again, this is one of those things where I come back and say, I think the biblical view, and I'm just going to say Christian here, but it could be more than that. The Christian view of what a human being is the thing that actually gives us the grounding to validate someone's humanity because 
The Bible teaches that every single human being is made in the image of God, regardless of what they believe, regardless of what, whether they're male or female, regardless of any of those things. There's a certain kind of beauty and value that individual persons and humanity as a collective holds together that I can validate that you ought to be treated fairly, that you ought to be loved, that you ought to be cared for, even if that means you're wrong about the things that you're saying you're wrong about. And I wish that we sat across from each other and had these conversations, especially with some of our pluralistic friends, in that kind of a way. It's, hey, I validate, but I don't agree with your sentiments, right? I validate in regards to what you're trying to do, bring about unity. But this seems to be the sort of thing that you can't have unity about, which kind of raises another concern. The concern here has to do with religion being about opinions merely. This is because we have subjugated religious convictions to the category of opinions rather than truth. That's an underlying assumption in the conversation. Quite a bit of people who tend to be pluralistic think that religion is just about opinions. So it works for you or some kind of a pragmatism, right? So you think Christianity works for you, and that's great, but Hinduism works for me, and atheism works for him or her, and Buddhism, and, and Islam works for that guy. And I, I want to bring into the conversation that these aren't just mere um, functional habits we have to make our lives better. They're not just opinions we have because of the cultures and the societies we were raised in, but the religions themselves are truth systems that make truth claims and therefore can be agreed with or disagreed with. And as a matter of fact, when you make certain claims, you, by default, I would like to say by definition, exclude everybody else who disagrees with you. And so you, you want to have a holistic conversation when it comes to this, especially in the realm of evangelization. When Christians get into conversations with individuals that don't share our faith, and have a sentiment of this unity aspect, because frankly put, worldviews, I don't want to say just religions, but worldviews generally are divisive because they have truth claims they make and have caused quite a bit of stir and harm throughout world history. And people want to refrain from that. And I don't want to refrain from it. I want to acknowledge the wrongs done by Christians. I want to acknowledge the wrongs done by any religion, any worldview you want to plug into that and say, is, does that, the wrong done, compute with the claims of the religion itself? Or is it contrary to it? That way we can distinguish between what we're talking about and then come to some kind of a resolution on the subject. I think if you have those conversations, I think if you actually explain and have a conversation on those grounds, your conversations with people and your evangelization will be a lot more productive. I think Christians will have a lot more productive conversations with people if they actually do what I just said and then give the details I just gave.